Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports and subscribers. What's going on, guys? Now, um, I went on a bit of a rant yesterday about some of the things that have been said on Twitter from Guillermo Rigondeaux this week. Uh, if you guys don't know, for those of you who aren't really too uh, caught up on what's going on with what he's been saying over the last couple of uh, days, basically after Lomachenko's great performance against Nicholas Walters where he made him quit and say no mas, he went on Twitter and he expressed a lot of jealousy towards Lomachenko, basically saying that, you know, how come, because the, the media gives Lomachenko a lot of credit for his, his skill, and I believe Jim Lampler in HBO even went as far as to call his like defensive skill and ability to not get hit, they called him the Matrix. And he was like, well, how come they don't call me the Matrix? They don't call Terrence Carver the Matrix, and they give Lomachenko all this credit. And he literally goes on, like, multiple tweet rants about Lomachenko. And I'm like, I'm sitting here, you know, I haven't really commented on it. I just sat back. I listened to a lot of the YouTube channels out there. Um, and a lot of the people, you already know what their agenda is. They're very racist channels. They have their own agendas. But my thing is this. No, and I knew that nobody, like, like honestly, I'm not, I'm not trying to be, like, mean or nothing. But I can tell a lot of you guys don't really follow boxing at, as a whole because you guys are just looking at this from you know your whatever perspective that feeds your agenda but you're not looking at it from like a holistic perspective so it's no secret that Guillermo Rigo, Rigondo can't get fights in the U USA because promoters have lost money in the eyes regardless of how skilled he is because he is a skilled fighter I and I enjoy watching him fight but in terms of business what's good for business boxing is a business you know, Rigo is a cancer to that because of his lack of, you know, like for example, I'll give you guys, I'll give you guys an example. On the Cotto Canelo undercard, that was a perfect opportunity for Guillermo Rigondo to make a statement and gain a lot of fans get pe and get people on his side. You know, that that was the second big, biggest pay-per-view last year behind Mayweather Pacquiao. That did like 850,000 pay-per-view buys. He had a guy in San Francisco who we could have easily just got out of there and had an impressive performance against. But what does he do? He delivers a snooze fest. I mean, I was at when I watched that fight live. I was actually at a watch party, and he was so boring that people were playing dominoes while he was fighting. So, forget all that. You know, you know. I appreciate the skill and the little subtleties that, that make him great. But the average casual fans that pay pay money to see these pay per view fights don't want to see Guillermo Rigondeaux throwing twelve punches around, all soft jabs. They don't want to see that. It was a glorified sparring session. So. He's not good for prom promoters aren't willing to put money behind him in the states anymore. So in order for him to get fights, he's had to go overseas. And because you know, in 2014 he went to Japan to fight, and um, you, you know, look, last year he turned down an offer from Bob Arum and Top Rank uh, for five hundred thousand dollars to fight Lomachenko, and the winner would have gotten a, the winner of that fight, whatever it may be between Lomachenko and Rigondeaux, they would have got. 500,000 as well, uh, an additional 500,000, so you're looking at a million dollar payday if he beats Lomachenko, and him and his team, for whatever reason, I don't know, I don't know I'm not going to say he's ducking, I don't, I, don't want, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, his team and him turned down the fight, so I just find it comical that people are now saying that this guy, that, that um basically Lomachenko is ducking him, when Lomachenko in actuality is the guy who wanted to fight him last year, so... But another thing is this, people aren't taking this into account, Rigo campaigns at 122 pounds, alright, I just mentioned to you guys how he fought in Japan in 2014 and he has to go overseas to get fights, Why? instead of complaining and whining and having visa problems and talking about how, you know, he's blaming everybody else for his problems, for his freaking terrible like his performance in the ring, um, instead of doing that, why, why, why wasn't Rigo more proactive? Why didn't he say, okay, I can't get a fight with the top guys in my weight class. I can't get a fight with the top guys at 126. But you know what? There's a killer over there at 118. And, you know, I fought in Japan. And I can go to Japan. I can fight. I could have fought. I, I can fight Shinsuke Yamanaka. And I can, I can be an undefeated pound for pound fighter. And you would he would have got so much credit for it. Like, Yamanaka is one of the best fighters in the world. I believe either it, I, th I think he might have the most title, title defenses in boxing right now, currently. Either him or Golovkin. I know he has like 10. I can't remember right now how much Golovkin has. But if, if uh, Rigo was to go in there and beat the Yamanaka, you know what that would say to 
you want to know what that say, what that would say about him as a fighter? It would, it would probably, it would easily be the best win of his career, better than Donaire, but way better than Donaire, because Donaire is like a a fringe level fighter, a uh, Hall of Fame fighter. Yamanaka, you no, know, I can confidently say he's got, he's gonna go all, he should go to the Hall of Fame with the resume he has, title defense, being a dominant champion in his weight class. So Rigo didn't try to do that when it made all the business sense in the world. He, he's fought in Japan before. Yamanaka has a big fan base. But the, the problem is, in his, in his deluded mind, he thinks he's an A-side fighter. And people tell him he's an A-side fighter when he's not an A-side fighter. He's, he, has a, he, has a, he has the skill set to be an A-side fighter. But from a business standpoint, he is far from an A-side fighter. Because to be an A-side fighter, you got to have a fan base. And outside of hardcore boxing fans, which in actuality isn't a big number, there aren't a lot of Guillermo Rigondeaux fans. Most I live in South Florida, okay? I live in South Florida. Most people in freaking South Florida don't know who Guillermo Rigondeaux is. So what does that say about who he is as 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 a, as a, as a draw, as a name? So that, that, I'm food for thought. Rigo could have fought Lomachenko last year. He turned it down. While he was sitting around complaining and waiting for fights, he could have went another route and fought Yamanaka for the WBC title at 118 pounds and beat a pound for pound undefeated fighter, one of the most dominant champions in boxing, but he didn't try to do that. And uh, there were people, not a lot of people, I wouldn't say a lot of people because a lot of you guys don't even know who Yamanaka is because you don't follow boxing, but there were people that know boxing that were clamoring for that fight and Rigo never made it happen or tried to make it happen. So, food for thought, all right? So instead of, instead of just looking at this from a couple tweets, why don't you look, look, about, look what's transpired over the last year and a half or so. Rigo could have been done, did stuff, but instead he, he pointed the finger at everybody else, and uh, that's why he is where he is. That's part of the reason why he is where he is now. That and his inability to deliver great, exciting performances when he had more exposure than most people. Okay? If you guys remember correctly, Andre Ward was supposed to fight on the undercard, not him. Andre had the injury, Andre had the injury, and then Rigo replaced him. I, I was excited for it. I remember telling everybody, I was going uh, to this fight, I was like, man, this guy is great. He's going to deliver a great performance. This guy is a, a gold medalist, one of the best amateur fighters ever. And it was, it was a stinker. He, he really went in there, and it was a sparring session. And everybody got bored. They played dominoes until the Takashi Miura Orlando Salido fight came on. Or Francisco Vargas fight, I should say. Takashi Miura Francisco Vargas fight came on. And then that kind of re rewoke everybody up. But before that, people were playing dominoes watching Rigo fight. So don't mi mi miss me with that whole... Lomachenko's ducking him, and Loma Lomachenko needs to do this. Lomachenko can do whatever the hell he wants. He, he tried to fight Rigo already, all right? And Rigo sat there, and, and they turned it down. So that's what it is. But you can love me, or you can hate me, but I'm just keeping it. So until next time, take care, guys.